Hi, it's Matt Thomas from King and Eek back upon the Sonic. And what are we going to look at today? It rhymes with blodular sniff sniff sniff. That's right, it's modular synthesis. How did you tell? Maybe it was the cunning clues like the modular synthesis and the modular synthesis and the modular synthesis. Yeah, we got it all. We got all the modular synthesis. Now, look, I'm not going to talk for ages as I normally do because this is a kind of a talky course. It's in two halves. There's a talky half and then there's a wibbly half, okay? Now, the talky half is because in order to get into modular synthesis, there's a really off-putting bit where like people sort of show you weird cases and babble on about plus five volt power draw and all that, and it's really off-putting. So to get you into that bit, the first half of the course is I've taken the pain for you, okay? I've read and researched it to death so that I'm going to try and be moderately entertaining on there are limits to what I can do with current draw but I'll try and get us through that bit. At the end of that bit, you're gonna go, oh, wow, like I think I might be able to do modular synthesis without putting knit needles through my eyes. How exciting, and it is. Now we've got like other courses we've done before, the bread and butter stuff, okay? So this course goes with them. At that point, once we've got you like sitting here with like, you know, you, you've either got a semi-modular or you've got a modular or you've gone virtual, I'll get you to that point. You then learn the bread and butter stuff in the other courses, you know, the CB, the Gates, the Triggs. We've got a tiny recap, but I don't want to get bogged down that again. Because this is modular synthesis. It goes on forever. There's not enough hours or weeks or years in my life to do it fully justice. So we're going to do what we can. So we're going to skip over the bread and butter stuff. I'll point you to the course that teaches you that. And then we're going to get into the real specky, nerdy bits like function generators, low pass gates, Euclidean sequences, and actually really get wibbly. So that's it. I won't keep talking. There's a lot of talking to come, but it's good. And you'll learn and we will modularate. First thing, I'm assuming you know absolutely nothing about modular synthesis. That's the basis of this course, right? Like, you know nothing. And like, that's fine because that's exactly where most people start. And in some cases where most people end their modular journey. Because you take one look at a forum like, full of people gibbering about current draw and skiffs and nerlies and that's, that's, no, no, walk away, enough. So I'm here to help you get past that. And I've got to just be clear, I was in exactly the same boat for years. I would just look at this and go, there, 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 no, and it's not for me. It is for you. It's just a little bit of a, uh, a short bit of hill to climb at the start in terms of some terminology, some basic ideas. So for the next three videos, I'm going to explain those basics, the absolute minimum info that you'll need to start a hardware system. We'll look at software and semi-modular as well after that, okay? So the first thing, we're going to look at different modular formats now. Then we'll do choosing your first case in the next video. And the video after that, we'll do your first power supply. There's going to be a lot of talking and not much wibbling. So to keep you going, there's a little bit of wibbling. <laughs> That's where we're headed, so push on through. Okay, modular formats. These here are both modular synth modules. This big blue thing is an extremely obscure modular format unique to a company called Synthetic Music Systems. There's probably about six of these modular synths in the world. And this is an example of the most popular modular format in the world, Eurorack. As you can see, these are not gonna fit comfortably alongside each other in the same case. Now, back in the 60s and the 70s, it seemed that pretty much every synth manufacturer had their own modular system with its own module size and power spec. So that mixing and matching modules from different firms in a single case was pretty much a no-no. Even connecting up two separate modular synths might be tricky due to each one using different types of patch cables, mini jack, full-size jack, or stackable banana cables, maybe even matrix pins. Companies such as Buchla, Surge, PPG, ARP, they like the acronyms, didn't they? EMU, Roland, and Polyfusion all produced in-house modular systems that might or might not play nicely with other manufacturers' kit. But by the early 2000s, two modular formats emerged as the popular standards, Derpfer's Eurorack and the long-standing Moog modular format. Now they're sometimes referred to as 3U or 5U, U referring to the number of units of height that modules take up in a 19-inch rack. Now, 
20 years ago, I could have given that explanation to any musician and they'd have gone, yeah, okay, cool. And that'd be that. Today though, with like most studio equipment being in our laptops, some of you may be wondering, what the hell's a 19 inch rack? And for you people, ta-da, this is a 19 inch rack. It's an equipment rack with rails where I can mount studio gear like compressors, effects units, etc. You may have seen something similar in Reason. Well, it happened in real life too. And the width of this rack is 19 inches, hence a 19 inch rack. But what's one you? Okay, so to screw equipment into this rack, they have to be the right size to line up with these mounting holes on each side. So manufacturers refer to the smallest gap between the holes as one unit or one U. Pieces of gear can be any number of units high. So this is a one U patch bay. These are three U EQs. Okay, so a Eurorack module is three U's high and a Moog is five. The enormous and wildly expensive Technosaurus Selector had modules that were 9Us high. Highly sought after 70s surge modules were 4Us and so on. The more Us you have, the more room there is on the front panel of each module. So a 3U Euro rack uses 3.5mm mini jack connectors for that reason, to save space. While the 5U Moog modules are large enough to use full-size jacks and often have less crowded panels. Now if you're wondering how you mount your modules into a 19-inch rack, of course you don't. This is modular synthesis. Nothing makes sense. I mean, who would define the height of their modules in reference to a rack and then simply put them in it? <laughs> what you do is you put them in a different case that there isn't anything to do with the 19 inch rack. And then you put a power supply in that case and then you put that case wherever you want. I mean, you could put it into a 19 inch rack if you want to, some people do, but yeah, there you go, modular. So next we'll look at how you do choose a case. Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you love this video, then smash a like. And if you want to be notified about new videos, hit the subscribe and notification buttons. Peace.